Hey guys, what's up? Dardick here, Old School Duelist 12, whatever you want to call me, coming at you with a deck profile in a new, weird way. Don't ask why I'm trying this, I just wanted to be experimental. So, as you can tell, I have Hieratics, uh, but this is uh, pure Hieratics. I guess I guess it's pure Hieratics. It's Hieratics with a uh, with a hand trap engine. Um, if you did if you didn't notice, that was the name of the title down below. So um, it's an interesting deck. It's like I'm going to warn you now. It's not like super super competitive. I mean, I faced Quantum's and I wrecked Quantum's face with them. Uh, but that's because I just got lucky with my drawing into hand traps. The consistency, it's either literally a hit or a miss. Um, so, it's its whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm going to jump into the deck real quick. Um, obviously, like normal, we do the main deck. There is no extra deck because, like I said, I don't see this deck as very competitive. Um, some of my other decks are definitely competitive. And this one is not. So, let's jump into the deck profile. I'm playing three uh, te Heretic Dragon of Tefnuit, three Heretic Dragon of Sue, three Heretic Dragon of Iset, and one Heretic Dragon of Nebthet. Now, the reason why I'm only running one Nebthet, because Nebthet is literally not the biggest play of the deck. The biggest play of the deck is your sixes, and uh, Iset counts because you target your uh, you target your Labdorart, Labdorite. So, like I said, it's a hand trap. It's a hand trap deck, so this is basically essentially your core with the hand traps as, like I said, hand traps. Uh, my vanillas of the deck are def are one Labdorite, Labdorite, one Curse of Dragon, and one Galaxy Serpent. What I, what most people normally play uh, when I thought of this idea, um, they play. Um, I got the idea when I saw another video. Uh, they were just they were just playing pure heretics, uh, and they were running a small monarch build in it. They just ran two Kaias or two Kaias, two Kaias um, just for just stupid reasons. Um, but he ran two Labdorite and one Wattail. I would per, I would like to run two Labdorites um, and a Galaxy Serpent, but because of the Neb set, I decided to play one Labdorite, one Curse of Dragon, one Galaxy Serpent. If you want to try it, take out the Nebthet and take out the Curse of Dragon. Um, just so you don't have to deal with your fives, really. Uh, but that is literally the main part of the deck. That I, uh, The main engine is Labdorite, Galaxy Serpents, and your Sixes and your Issets. Curse of Dragon and Nebthet are just in there because I had the space and I don't have a second Labdorite. So I thought of something running something different. Yeah, I could just run the Wattail, but I need the Tuner level 6. Uh, and then obviously I run one red red eyes darkness metal or red MD depending on what you call it. Uh, that's just pretty standard. Now getting into the hand trap build. Uh, most people now I thought the idea of running hand traps for the reason of because uh, gores. Most people just run gores, and some people run max or run max C. Uh, but I decided to try hand traps because hand traps. Were always interesting to me, and I never really found a deck that uh, needed hand traps so dearly. So I decided to just you know splice in hand traps because why not? Uh, I mean, as soon as all the blue eye stuff comes out, I'm building that. Like I'm gonna take this deck apart, even though this is my favorite deck of all time, or not? It's my favorite dragon deck of all time. The blue eyes support coming out it has me pumped because that's from when I was little. Blue eyes is amazing, but I'm not gonna get into that. I have another video coming up with. A lot of the ex explanation on blue eye stuff, um, but yes. So I run three gores, um, and I don't run uh, Trigodia because uh, now that Trigodia is at three, uh, I don't have two more Trigodia. So I just I thought about running two Trigodia, two so Scarecrow, but the consistency was just all weird and off. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna run three gores and three so Scarecrow. Uh, so Scarecrow is actually pretty nice. Uh, the only downfall is that with Trigodia, I can't take monsters 
Uh, I can't take my opponent's monsters or special summon. I also can't uh, target a monster in grave for overlays and stuff like that. Uh, so that's only downfall, but this does negate the attack and end the whole battle phase. Which is, I can't complain that much when I end the whole battle phase. Uh, and that's the reason why I just decided to just run two or three so scarecrow. I run three or not three, two effect veiler. Uh, you can chain it with the gores uh, and also uh, with other stuff like when you uh, sync for eights with your galaxy serpents and all the other fun stuff. Uh, but that'll go in. I'll explain that when I get into this extra deck. Uh, but I run two effect veiler just for the effect negation because this deck needs effect negation. Uh, it's also in there so you can run uh, so you use your level one tuner. Uh, I run one honest. Uh, I thought about running two, but I just didn't have the space for it. But I run one honest just to get over big stuff because big stuff is a problem in this deck, um, especially with um, Cosmos. Uh, like I mean, it's not a competitive deck, but I kind of put a little engine or I kind of built it so it can get into Cosmos. If you do decide to play this competitively, uh, the one honest is nice because it gets over your Dark Destroyer. And then I run one maxi mainly because I only own one maxi. Um, but the maxi is nice. I feel like even if I had more than one maxi, I wouldn't run more than. Excuse me, I wouldn't run more than one just because of all the consistency and stuff. Uh, and then for the last monster of the deck, that is not a hand trap. Uh, three card card DU. Back in the day when I built Heretics, which I'm pretty sure there's an old video up that explains uh, why I'm deciding to run card card D now. Um, but yeah, I never liked Card Card D back in the day when Heretics were first, uh, when they were meta. Um, but now I'm okay with Card Card D. Because the biggest reason is because I didn't like running Card Card D. Because you play, and then you uh, tribute, and then you draw two cards, and that's your whole turn. You don't do anything else. Which was definitely a big bummer of mine, and I didn't really like that much. But running the hand traps, I'm actually okay with uh, running Card Card D now. And it's not a big downfall of the deck. It's actually pretty consistent now, so I can't complain. Uh, that takes care of the monsters. Running on, moving on to the spells. Uh, I'm obviously running three Heretic Seal of Convocation. It's the search. You can just go off with the search all day, every day. You can play all three on one turn if you need to. Uh, that's really about it. Um, two, MST, or Mystical Space Typhoon. Uh, like I said, if you want to play competitive, I definitely would suggest switching this to Twin Twisters. But because this is not a competitive deck, or I'm not seeing it or using it as a competitive deck, uh, I just run the MSTs, because why not? Um, so it's not a big deal that I don't have the Twin Twisters for the deck. Uh, that's really about it. Uh, I run one Reasoning. Reasoning is an interesting card to run. It's, it's awkward. Uh, it can be an awkward card, uh, but for the most part, I've never run into the problem of it being a problem. Because all it takes is them saying a number and you draw into you play any of your hand traps or anything like that, and it hits field. Um, that's a downfall. Uh, but like I said, I've never run into that problem just because I usually run into a heretic because of all the heretics in the deck. One one day a piece just for the more for the draw power and one upstart goblin for the draw power. Uh, that's it for the spells. Uh, moving on to the traps. I play three reckless greed. Playing this and the hand traps. Uh, it's actually pretty nice. Normally, I don't like playing Reckless Greed because I don't I, I want my turns of drawing, but with the draw power, with a little bit of draw other, other extra draw power I have plus the hand traps, I can usually stall out the two turns. And then two Well Decree, just because I don't like because traps are annoying in this deck, and it's just so I can keep up with speed of other people's decks. Like I said, I haven't built a deck for competitive. But if you wanted to, there is that splice of competitiveness in there. So that takes care of the main deck. We're moving on to the extra deck. Um, I, I play one Tears Keeper of Genesis. It's the only rank 5 that I run in the deck. So just because Tears is so good, and yeah, first turn Tears is just a nice card to play. Um, I play two Heretic King of a Tum. Uh, yeah, Heretic Dragon King of a Tum. Tum is an interest. Is a really is all you need is two. This is what I'm gonna get at. All you need is two. Atom. I do have a second one, but I just like my uh, anime girl, Heretic Atom. Uh, definitely waifu material. Uh, but yes, two Atom is all you really need. Uh, I play one Constellar Ptolemy M7 just for the bounce back because I do sixes a lot in the deck. Uh, one Swordbreaker because it, like I said, bring, to bring up the Quantum Duel again. 
Uh, this gets over monsters that say, oh, cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. This monster gets over that effect just for the fact of you detach, target him, or not target him, declare and uh, type, and you just punch and it dies by his effect, or it just dies because this monster battled it. Doesn't affect the monster in any way, so it definitely runs over uh, any monsters that say uh, unaffected by card effects and stuff like that. Uh, because it battles it, doesn't affect it in any way, like I said. Uh, one, Utopia Beyond, uh, just for the OTK, because you can definitely drop uh, these, uh, you can definitely drop these three and go for the OTK, hardcore. Um, so yeah, because when it's summoned, it just drops everything. All monsters your opponent currently controls drops their attack to zero. So, like I said, OTK with that card. And one Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger, just because Gaia Dragon, Thunder Charger, uh, you run the Tum, so... You need to be able to do piercing damage or do damage with a Tom, or else you just got a 24 monster just sitting on the field waiting to be attacked. Uh, so just to deal some damage, run the one Gaia just because. Uh, that takes care of all the uh, ranked or the XYZ monsters. Uh, this uh, the hand trap engine. Um, uh, I kind of focused also. Reason why your sixes are important is because of this card right here, Ultimaya Suklin. Zuzalkin. Ultimaya Zelkin, whatever. The fucking Red Crimson Dragon. That's what I call him because it's definitely that's what it is. It's the Red Crimson Dragon. Uh, it's an amazing card. All day, every day. This card's amazing in this deck. So, this is kind of your big main card of the your big monster of the deck uh, because there's enough spells and traps in the deck where you can just set them and go off with effect. Uh, one Black Rose Dragon because you can sink for sevens. And drop her sevens. I mean, why, why? If you can nuke the field, nuke the field. Uh, one Stardust Dragon. I know what you're saying. Stardust Dragon, really? Stardust Dragon. Um, I play Stardust Dragon because Red Geki's a thing. And uh, like, I mean, like I said, like I'll. This deck is not. I don't see it as a competitive deck. I don't play it as a competitive deck. But if you want to play it for competitiveness, there is monsters. There is the deck can be played competitive. I just personally, this deck is for fun for me. But Star Dragon protects your widespread stuff like your mirror forces because mirror forces are a thing. Torrential tributes, anything that destroys monsters by card effect, uh, drop that because uh, why not? One Beels, uh, Beelzel, the Diabolic Dragon because this is kind of just like summon the rim, the red uh, red crimson dragon, set a card. Summon him. He's protected like crazy. So it's an important card of the deck. Or I wouldn't say important. But it definitely protects the crap as your Red Crimson Dragon. Your Ultimaea. I play one Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend because it's a funny card. These two cards go into giant monsters. And those giant monsters are Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss and Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane. These are cards. These two are in there for fun because I can do it. Uh, this is your this is your card for uh, going into um, for using Effect Veiler as an actual tuner and Galaxy Serpent. Uh, you're more likely going to go into this card before this card, honestly, just because you can go into you can get Galaxy Serpent out faster than you can Effect Veiler. So yeah, that's really that is literally the whole deck profile. Like I said, to me, I don't see this deck as competitiveness, uh, but that's just me because. Uh, I play at a competitive level. Um, I guess you can say I play at a professional level in a way. Um, so this deck, I don't see it as a competitive deck. It's literally a for fun deck. I built it because I'm waiting on on Blue Eyes, and this deck can play competitively. It's just literally a hit or a miss. Either you're gonna get your combos off really fast because of consistency, because it actually has solid consistency, or you're not going to get your combos off because of bad consistency. Um, and yeah, that's really about it on the deck. Hope you guys really enjoyed it, because I love playing the deck. Thank you, and uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my other videos. All the links to all social media for me is in the link down below. Thank you, and have a wonderful, beautiful night, day thing, or whatever.